in this video we are going to discuss tunnel diode the tunnel diode consists of a pn junction whose two sides are made by degenerate semiconductors so a tunnel diode is simply made by a pn junction but in a normal pn junction and here junction used in tunnel diode the main difference is that here the two sides that is n side and p side are made by degenerate semiconductors and this was found by isaki in 1958 so sometime tunnel diode is also known as isaki diode so we know that because the two sides of tunnel diode are made by degenerate semiconductors therefore the fermi level in n side lies within the conduction band and the fermi level in the p side lies within the valence band we have already discussed some properties of degenerate semiconductors and we here <coughs> we discussed that the for degenerate semiconductors if it is n type then the fermi level lies within the conduction band and if a degenerate semiconductor is p type then its fermi level lies within the valence band so due to degenerate semiconductor and obviously they are heavily doped due to degenerate semiconductor conductors on 
both of the sides the zero bias depletion region width of the junction is very small normally it is less than 100 angstrom and therefore the electric field reaches a value higher than 10 raised to the power 6 volt per centimeter at such high fields a large tunnel current is observed even at a small reverse bias that causing the general breakdown of the junction. Thus, the tunnel diode can be considered a Jenner diode with a zero reverse breakdown voltage. So, simple meaning is here that a tunnel diode is also a PN diode or made by PN junction, but here the doping in N side or P side is very high. That is, we can say that here the two types of semiconductors are degenerate semiconductors and we know 
in degenerate semiconductors the fermi levels lie inside the valence band or conduction band that depends upon the doping of the or conductivity of the semiconductor so if we draw simple diagram that is let's say it's p type semiconductor this is maximum of the valence band and this is minimum of the conduction band so for a normal semiconductor if it's p type then its fermi level can lie somewhere near the valence band and if it's a n type then its fermi level can lie somewhere near the conduction band but for a degenerate p type semiconductor its fermi level lies within the valence band so this is the energy band diagram for p type degenerate semiconductor and similarly if we draw energy band diagram for n type degenerate semiconductor we know that this is the band gap or forbidden gap that is easy and for n type degenerate semiconductor the fermi level lies within the conduction band so this is fermi level for n types degenerate semiconductor and this is the fermi level for p type degenerate semiconductor so when we make a junction between these semiconductor so to get fermilion equilibrium electrons will move from this n side to p side therefore energy bands of the p side will move in upward direction and energy bands for n side will move in the downward direction so after making a junction we can draw their energy band diagram like this so p type will go in upward direction so this is ev for p type and this is ec for n type 
so here we can see there is a bending like this so this is p side and this is n side and here we can see that the barrier height that is the gap between their conduction band which is equal to qvb so this is the barrier height and this is easy band gap if we convert this easy we can write it as g vg so in tunnel diode normally this vb is greater than this vb is greater than vg so this is very important to note and we can make this length that is depletion length which is equal to w not because here we are not applying any biasing condition so this is the energy band diagram for tunnel diode so this is the let me write here energy band diagram of a tunnel diode in thermal equilibrium condition so there are some advantages of this tunnel diode so first one is its low cost normally tunnel diode can be made easily with low cost and they can perform very well with low noise and third one since they are made by degenerate semiconductors their speed is very high so they can perform with high speed and we need very low input power for their operation so these are some advantages of this tunnel diode and if we draw iv characteristics of this tunnel diode so its iv characteristics 
looks like this. So in this side, this is applied voltage and this is current. So normally it looks like this. So this is in reverse bias condition, this portion. And this is in forward bias condition. So we can see that in forward bias condition, first current will increase to its maximum value IP. And after that, it will start to decrease and after getting its minimum value at a voltage, let's say it's VV, then again it will start to increase. So we can divide this curve in four segment, that is first one is A. Second one is this one that is B and the third one C and the fourth one this D. So this is the, if we compare this IV with a normal PN diode, then we know that for a simple PN diode, this like this one, this is for normal PN diode. But for a tunnel diode, this is for a simple diode, but this is for tunnel diode and the symbol for a symbol of tunnel diode It is different from a normal diode. It is like this. This and there is a circle around this. So this is the symbol of a PN diode. So in next lecture, we will discuss about the operation of this tunnel diode and we will discuss about this IV characteristics in details.